let me share some Grubhub tips with you that will hopefully make you more money in 2022. A really huge tip for you is that the Grubhub card is required and I don't like it. As soon as I was activated on Grubhub, I was reminded that I needed to get their credit card to pay for customers' orders. Yeah, this is not good. I would say that you probably never want to use this card except for a few occasions to have a place and pay order or if you're only paying for the order and the restaurant will already have the order ready. I say it's not worth it because usually you're not getting too much extra pay for when you have to place the order yourself. And like that could take up just a lot of time because you have to either call the restaurant and place the order and then wait like what, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, or you get to the restaurant and you place the order there and you might have to wait even longer. And if you are using the card to pay for the order, that means that that restaurant is not on Grubhub's platform or they're not integrated properly. And that often causes a huge wait time when you are trying to pick up the order because the order will almost never be ready when you walk into the store. For 2022, I really don't expect that this is going to change much. I don't think we're gonna get paid more for doing these kinds of orders and the wait time will not really be reduced. And so unfortunately, these orders are almost never okay to accept, at least in my opinion. And so for 2022, probably just avoid them. Speaking of long wait times, that is a common theme with Grubhub orders. The reason for this, I think this is important, when the customer places the order, the order is also immediately sent to a driver, which I think this is a terrible idea. Let's say the customer places an order at 6.30 p.m. Well, by 6.31, you, the driver, might have already accepted that order, which I think is crazy to me because I don't think DoorDash or Uber Eats does something similar to this. So when the restaurant gets the order and they see what's on it, they might say, oh, like that's going to be ready in 20 minutes. And it's not like I'm going to make it any faster just because it's a Grubhub order and a driver already accepted the order. That's just how long it typically takes to make the food. But the driver, you have already accepted the order and you might be about like two to three minutes away from the restaurant when you clicked accept. And so you drive immediately to the store. But when you get there, you are going to have to wait like 15 to 20 minutes for them to finish up the food because the restaurant just got the order like three minutes ago. This happens so often when I am driving for Grubhub and it's probably the most annoying thing that I have to deal with. It's just that like the orders just aren't ready when you go to the restaurant. This is not something I really have to deal with on DoorDash or Uber Eats. Maybe I'll have to wait like, you know, one to five minutes or the order can even be ready. Sometimes the order is ready on Grubhub, but so many times I'm just like given a really long estimate of how long I'm supposed to wait. And so that's actually why I've been doing like more fast food orders on Grubhub. And maybe you might have been seeing the same thing and you might want to gravitate towards those fast food orders because, you know, those fast food places will make the order when you get there. And usually it'll be like really quick. But with these sit down places, oh, it could be a long time. For this year, 2022, I really don't see that changing a whole lot. Like if Grubhub for some reason thinks that it's now okay to kind of hold the order a little bit longer before sending it out to a driver, then I think Grubhub will improve greatly as a platform. But just for right now, like I don't see them changing that anytime soon. One really great thing about Grubhub is that they are pretty transparent with their orders. They do not hide tips like their driving counterparts, DoorDash and Uber Eats. They will show you the full upfront pay that you're going to get. And that is never going to change. It's not going to be lower than that amount and it's not going to be higher than that amount. And so you may see the highest offers on Grubhub. You may see orders upwards of like $20 and that is showing you the full Grubhub pay and the full customer tip. I also think for 2022 that this will stay. I do not think that they are going to start hiding the customer tip. Uh, if they start doing that, then, oh man, that is going to be really bad. But I think the full pay is going to stay, at least for this year. 
I think that Grubhub prides itself on being transparent with the pay that the driver is going to get. And so I think it's great that they do this and they will continue to do this, hopefully. Because of the last two things that I mentioned with Grubhub sending out the orders immediately when the restaurant receives them, and that they are fully transparent about the pay, this often leads to many orders that show a huge amount of mileage that you're gonna have to drive as the delivery driver. Grubhub is looking to find a driver for the order as fast as possible. And to do this, they often have to send drivers all over the map just to make sure that these orders are being fulfilled. Do I like this? Ah. Uh, I don't love it, uh, especially when they are trying to send me an order where the restaurant is about like eight miles away from me. Like I really don't want to accept that when the restaurant is so far away. But I do think that it's okay that they do this just because they show the full pay for that delivery. You will often see orders with like 10 miles and making $10. And no, I wouldn't really accept that but you're just not gonna get these kinds of offers from the other platforms because the other platforms like to keep you near a restaurant where you are currently by so that you can get to the restaurant as fast as possible. But with Grubhub, they're saying, oh, here's an order, why don't you take this? And they don't really like put it through any sort of filter. They're just like, all right, yeah, I mean, you're like kind of close, so sure, let's just give them that offer. Just make sure that you are rejecting those ones that don't make sense for you and just focus on doing the good orders that are going to be profitable for hitting your dollar per hour goal that you are trying to reach. Something that Grubhub does that I don't necessarily like is their payout for a closed store. When you go to a store and there's an excessive wait time or you just don't wanna do the order anymore, you can often unassign that without any problem just by clicking there's a problem and then just use one of the excuses that you would use to get out of that delivery. But with a closed store, it's much different because you don't want to just unassign that offer. At least that's what I thought. I thought that it would be ideal to mark the store as closed and contact support, see what can be done about this. Uh, but unfortunately, with the experiences I've had with trying to contact support saying that a store is closed, uh, you will not get paid very much. You will get paid between $1 to $2 for marking that store as closed and chatting with support to confirm that this is the case. Uh, however, that $1 to $2 is definitely not worth your time to have to go through all of the different steps it takes to mark the store as closed. And I've even seen this happen one time where there was an issue with the store not being able to get Grubhub orders for the entire day. And so I marked the store as closed. And when the order was canceled, I ended up getting $0 for that. Since you are just going to get anywhere between zero and like $2 for saying that the store is closed, and it's gonna take a while to chat with support to make sure this is the case. Uh, I'm just gonna say it right now. Like, and it's really sad that I have to say it, like you might as well just unassign that order and not have to go through all the trouble of getting your measly like $1. I really know that this is not good and it is not ideal uh, for having to do this, especially because you know that another driver is going to get that order after you unassign it and they're gonna have to deal with the closed store. Like I get that and I wish that it was worth my time to, you know, just market is closed and get money but grubhub has made it so difficult and they have made it not worth the while to actually go through that process and uh man if there is an easy way and you wouldn't have to chat with support then of course like just you know do that and hopefully they change this very soon uh so that you don't have to chat with support and you can get actually more than one or two dollars but i would say it's more beneficial for your time to just unassign that order and move on for 2022 maybe it improves i'm really hoping that this improves because this is just not good for the driver and it really makes the driver not want to drive for grubhub anymore something that i think is very important when driving for grubhub is that you are multi-apping you don't necessarily have to run other apps while you're trying to complete grubhub orders but in the case where there is a closed store and you do want to go through the process of canceling that order, then 
it, you can just go accept other orders on DoorDash or Uber Eats or any other app that you want to run at this time. And when it's really slow and Grubhub is trying to send you $10 for 10 miles and you don't want to do that, and that's really the only thing that you're getting, multi-apping is extremely important because you can still make your money while you're trying to find a good offer on Grubhub. At least for me in my market, there's just not a high quantity of orders or quality of orders that make sense for me that I can really just make all of the money I need to just on one app Grubhub. I'm going to have to use other apps. And I think that is totally okay if you do the exact same thing, use multiple apps at, even at the same time to try to make as much money as possible. Don't get careless with this. Don't end up showing to restaurants like 20 minutes late for Grubhub. Definitely do not be doing that. But if you need to make some money then and you're getting money from another platform, just go do that. Make sure you're marking yourself as unavailable if the situation you know makes sense for you to do that and then just go complete that other order. Just do everything that you can to maximize your earnings while also making sure that you're not getting deactivated from any platform. Thank you guys so much for watching this video on how to make more money with Grubhub in 2022. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. And if you've been enjoying the rest of my videos, please subscribe and I'll see you next time.